Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how I made a kids table with pallet wood and resin inlays. This is the gnarly old pallet wood I'm going to use for the project. These bits for the legs, these bits here for the top of the frame, and these bits are going to be used for the tabletop. I start off by cutting all the pieces of pallet wood to length on my miter saw. The next and very tedious step is to plane and thickness all the pallet wood to get it in a usable form. I then square up all the pieces on the table saw. Once I've got all the pieces that I'm using for the table top to the right thickness, I line them up and get them in the order that I want them to be on the table. They're then cut to the final dimensions on the mitre saw. I'm going to use these 8mm dowels. The materials is just over 15mm thick, so 8mm dowels should work perfectly. I'm going to put three in across the joint, so one's going to go 40mm from each edge and then one smack bang in the middle. The dowels are 40mm, so they're going to protrude about 20mm into each side. Got a dowel in each end, just slots over the top. And that should give quite a good join. The tabletop seems to have actually come out quite well, it's nice and sturdy, there's a small amount of flex in it but I think that's just because of the nature of the wood. I've given the top a good sanding now with the random orbital sander and I think it's fair to say it's pretty flat. One thing I need to do now is to fill these nail holes and there's some staining from the nails that were in there from where the pallets I think got probably a bit wet and the, the metal stained the wood. The staining is not really an issue but these holes are because it's going to be for children. I don't want food and stuff getting inside it so I'm going to fill these nail holes. Fill the holes. I'm going to use various different diameters of dowel. 5mm, 6mm, 9mm and this one is 12mm. So depending on the size of the hole I'm going to use different sizes. You do have to be careful that the 
diameter of the dowel isn't so big that it splits the wood. This one's just started to split a little bit but nothing too severe so I think I should be able to get away with it. I've also removed all the nail holes by plugging them in the pieces of wood that are going to make up the frame. Now all the aprons have been mitred, I've marked on the underside where I want to drill holes, so I'm going to screw through into the tabletop. I was going to just use wood glue to glue the joints, but actually I've changed my mind. I'm going to use this mitre bond stuff. It's basically like super glue or CA glue, I think they call it in the States. And it's got the glue itself and the activator. I've used it before when I've been fitting a couple of kitchens and it works really well. It's a really, really strong bond and it sets almost instantly. So for fiddly things like mitres, I'm going to line it up by hand and by eye and it should mean that I'm able to do it quite quickly and easily as opposed to waiting for the glue to dry. For the purposes of the table the joint doesn't need to be exceptionally strong because these screws are going to go into the tabletop and also going to have the leg in here. I cut the joint to join the table leg to the frame using my tenon jig. So I've cut all the pieces lengthways. This is going to be the piece that's going to be remaining so I'm going to use the crosscut sled just to remove this piece and this piece here. That's all the joints cut now, so I can glue it to the frame next. The glue's dried and I've removed the clamps. So now I'm going to clean up all the joints with my sander, scrape off the excess glue. The thing I've got to do something about is this knot that's basically rotted away. I've scraped all the rotten wood out and I think I'm going to fill it with epoxy. I'm going to paint this bottom frame with some white matte paint anyway so you won't see it over the epoxy so let's get it ready for painting so that's the frame all nicely sanded now I've given it a wipe with a damp cloth to take the dust off so now it's time to fill the knot with the resin
As far as the tabletop goes, I've had a bit of a change of plan. I was quite pleased with how I'd filled the nail holes. But as you can see, where the nails have been in the wood, there's this staining, and I want to leave the top quite natural compared to the white, the frame. So what I've done, I've got these templates that are for routing out letters, and I've drawn the alphabet on the table and looked to cover up as much as possible the stains from the nails so in hindsight I probably could have spent less time filling the nail holes and just used epoxy or something like that but there you go so what I'm going to do I'm going to route out all the letters probably to a depth of about four or five millimeters and then I'm going to fill them with different colored epoxies just to hopefully give it quite a nice effect of all the different letters of the alphabet also where the letters didn't cover all of the tabletop I've just got some shapes and drawn around them and I'm going to route out those shapes to the same depth and fill them with the epoxy as well and hopefully it'll give quite a nice effect on the tabletop. These aren't really the greatest quality they're just made of vinyl but they do serve their purpose I wouldn't want to use them for anything professional but they are quite sturdy and with them taped down there's no chance of them moving around. I've now routed out all of the letters. I've also done the shapes as well. I just did these freehand. You can start to see the dowels coming through as well, but it won't matter because there's resin going over it. I'm going to paint the inside of the letters with some different colours before I put the resin on just to make sure that you can't see through to the bare wood because it's still quite nasty inside and I think my router bit that I used must have been a bit dull because some of the insides of the letters are a bit burnt but as I said I'm painting it anyway so it shouldn't make any difference. You can see that my terrible painting skills has made quite a mess around the shapes but I've already started to sand these ones here with my random orbit sander and it clears it up quite nicely. There's still a little bit of staining from where the nails were but it's nowhere near as obvious. There's a bit there as well, in fact I think they're the only two bits. So I'm quite pleased with the effect that's providing. I'm going to sand the rest of the shapes with the orbital sander now. I've sanded all the excess paint off now and the letters and the shapes are starting to stand out quite nicely so I can now mix up and put the resin in. To colour the epoxy I'm just using a simple pigment that I bought on eBay. I use four different coloured pigments to match the different coloured paints. I've actually relocated to my shed now, or garden office, whatever you want to call it, because I've got a heater in here and it's nice and warm and it'll mean the resin cures a lot quicker. So sorry if there's a bit of an echo, it's a lot smaller than my garage. The knot that I filled with resin is now fully cured, it's nice and hard. As you can see the sawdust's given it a very brown tint because I didn't worry about the bubbles etc. There are a few bubbles in it but I'm going to now scrape off the majority of the surface resin and then sand it ready for painting. Right 
So they're not so filled and the frame itself is nice and smooth. Excuse the mess in my workshop at the moment. So now I'm ready to give it a coat of paint. First of all, I'm going to use this undercoat. It works really well because it will stop any knots, sap, etc. coming through. And I can spray it, which is ideal for me. So I'm going to spray that on outside. I'll see what it's like with one coat. I might need to put two coats on and then it'll be ready for painting. I'm going to spray paint it as well. The epoxy has all dried. I did have a bit of a nightmare with one part, which was this S. This knot here started to allow the resin to seep through and it started to leak out. Um, so I had to put tape underneath it to stop it. And when I was tilting it to do that, the resin started to run and the green here ran into the yellow of the little bird a bit so it's got a bit of a green tint, um, not a complete disaster. There's also a bit of yellow ran into this X and some red into the E but this made it a bit more purple which isn't a complete disaster. What I also did off camera was I got some just mixed clear resin and went over the top of some of the shapes that had um, where the resin seemed to have shrunk a bit and it wasn't over the top of the surface so what I wanted was a kind of domed effect on all of them so I can sand all the letters completely flat so that's what I'm going to do now that's all the excess resin now sanded off it was proven quite hard work for my random orbital sander so I ended up resorting to an angle grinder with a sanding disc attachment to quite aggressively remove all the resin. It's worked quite well now I'm just cleaning it up with the orbital sander. Hopefully these shapes will go a lot more translucent and a lot more shiny as you can see they're very sort of dull and cloudy at the moment. The top is completely sanded and buffed now I've gone up to a thousand grit and it's already got quite a sheen on it. The frame is all painted now and I've brought it into the house ready to attach the tabletop. Attach the top itself, I'm going to screw through the bottom. I've got three screw holes on each side and I'm going to screw into the tabletop. The thickness of the top's now down to about 14 mil. So I'm going to screw into it about 9mm because I don't want the screws protruding through the top. The tabletops now had one coat of tongue oil and been buffed with a lamb's wool cloth using the random orbit sander. It's got quite a nice sheen to it even with the first coat of oil and it should get better over time. I'm going to put probably three more coats of tongue oil on it. The reason I'm using tongue oil and it's pure tongue oil, it's not the one with all the additives in, is it completely food safe and will mean that even if my daughter decides to try and eat the tabletop, it should be okay. Obviously I'll try and discourage her from doing that. table all finished I have to say I'm really pleased with 
how it came out, particularly the resin inlays and the tongue oil finish has really made the grain of the pallet wood pop. It's the first main project that I've done using pallet wood. I couldn't believe how much longer it took to get all the wood into a usable form and the nail holes caused me a fair few problems. I was going to lacquer the top but I decided that the tongue oil would make it look much nicer and I'm glad I took that decision. The next job is to make some chairs to match. Hopefully they won't take quite as long. I'm going to try and look to give them the same effect in terms of white for the frame and then for the top of the chair I'm going to do in this tongue oil finish. I might put some resin inlays in that as well. We'll see. We'll see how time's getting on. As you probably saw, my daughter's really happy with it, so that's good. Can't wait for there to be pen marks and crayon ink all over it. I'm going to put another few coats of tongue oil on over the coming weeks just to ensure it's nice and hard and then hopefully it will be ready to use. I hope you enjoyed the video. Keep your eyes peeled for the one making the chairs. Hopefully it'll be along in a week or two once I get them made and get the video up. If you're not a subscriber already, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. Hopefully see you again soon.